All okay. right, so I'm gonna heat this up and I have the bearing. It's been chilling in the freezer for a couple hours, so it's freezing cold. So I should just be able to heat this up and drop it in, so. All right, hopefully that's warm enough. It went in partially and then stopped. This didn't really go according to plan. That worked. Ooh. Yeah, it's not it's not terribly hot. All right, now we just let that cool down, and I need to do the second one. Just move that over there. Nice. That one went in a lot better. I heated it up a lot more, so that probably definitely helped. So we got the bearing carriers. I'm pretty sure that's what these are called. They're not called hubs. These are the hubs. I think these are called bearing carriers. Bearing holders? I don't know. Something like that. But uh, I wasn't sure exactly how to build these originally. Originally I was kind of thinking of just taking a steel piece of tubing and just machining it to where the bearing fits inside and then just welding it to the trailing arms we need to make for this project. But then it's like, eh, it's a little too boring. Let's see if we can make it out of aluminum. And I found those two giant chunks of aluminum that were perfect size to make them out of one big piece of billet aluminum. And these things turned out pretty awesome. Now, in case you guys are wondering why I didn't just use one of these, because it would have just been a lot easier just to use these. This is actually the rear bearing carrier for a Player Sportsman 400, and we're using the front hubs of a Player Sportsman 400. So these actually don't fit. Together the bearings are bigger and this is just bigger and the bearing carriers for the front of a player sport, sportsman 400 are uh, spindles so that wouldn't work for our setup so I just decided to make these myself. And you gotta admit, these things turned out pretty awesome. And because they're aluminum, it is super lightweight. Now, I was also going to build the spindles for this project in this video but I think that would be just a little too much machining for one video. These kind of took a really long time to make and that was a lot of material remo removal. So I think I'll just save all that for the next video of this project and just end this video here. So anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video. So I kind of consider myself a lazy machinist because a real machinist would take a part like this and before they start you know, removing material, they would either draw this up in CAD and pre-figure out all the dimensions of what this part should be, or at the very least, they'll draw it up on a piece of paper and figure out the dimensions and everything. For me, I don't do anything like that. I just kind of have a general idea of what this thing needs to be. All I know is this bearing used to fit in here. It needs to be held in with a retainer clip. We need to have four holes to bolt this to the next part. And that is as far as planning as I've gone 
with this part. So with everything else, like what's the dimension of this? I don't know. Just keep removing material until it looks right. How thick should this be? I don't know. Just keep remov removing material until it looks right. How far should the bolt pattern be and everything? I don't know, just eyeball it until it looks right. When you, when you build everything from scratch, you're kind of able to do this because it really doesn't matter the dimensions of this part. As long as it works with this bearing and this fits onto here, and then you kind of just build the next part to where this part fits onto that part. That's kind of the benefit of building everything from scratch. It's not the best way to do something, but... In my opinion, it is the fastest way to do it, just to start removing material and just figure it out as you go along.